guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So I apologize if you hear any noise in the background, but I have the heat going because it's cold as shit. Today we're going to be talking about a grim subject. Surprise, surprise. I've actually talked about this individual before. The individual at hand is Nathan Larson. I think I have two videos about him. I will link those down below. Before we get into that though, I also did want to say that if you are interested in seeing a very thorough, more full scope kind of history of Nathan Larson and everything he's been up to. There's this content creator called Belle Demazi who has chronicled it, has brought attention to it. Like she's done massive work to get this guy put behind bars or to at least have some kind of legal consequence. I'll link all her social medias down below, but I strongly suggest you follow her if you want to follow this case and what he's up to. Former Virginia congressional candidate arrested for extremely disturbing plan to kidnap 12 year old girl, police say. This would be a shocking headline if it weren't for the fact that Nathan Larson has always been openly very troubling. Let's just talk about some of his beliefs, okay? And then you'll see why this isn't a surprising headline, though it is disgusting, obviously. So let's start with 2008. He sent a letter to the Secret Service in which he threatened to kill either George Bush or Barack Obama. So we already have that, and that's in 2008. Then the following year, he pleaded guilty to threatening to kill a president and served 16 months in prison. So we already have someone with a criminal background. And then in 2018, he ran for a congressional seat in Virginia. He has always also been open about extremely disgusting and degenerate beliefs, such as being a fan of Hitler, as well as wanting to, obviously being a fan of Hitler, he would want to restore the quote unquote benevolent white supremacy. He wanted to eliminate child labor laws and he wanted to legalize early marriage. And when I say early, he was also okay with incest. So early marriage is just another way of saying essentially a way for pedophilia to kind of be legally recognized as something valid. He also was in favor of child pornography. And in fact, because of all these worrisome, troubling beliefs, there was an interview. They asked him whether he was a pedophile or just wrote about pedophile sex fantasies. And he said, it's a mix of both. When people go over the top, there's a grain of truth to what they say. Honestly, I don't even think it should be a question whether he's a pedophile or not. He's literally advocated for the legalization of child pornography. Who, who isn't a pedophile would want to do that? Like what would be the reason for any of that? So the reason why Nathan Larson is so interesting to me is that he has been very openly, I won't, I don't even know what other term to use than like openly fucked up about his fucked up beliefs. And that in and of itself, to me would have mandated some kind of investigation. If you have someone who's constantly advocating a lot of fucked up things, but especially child pornography being legalized, I don't know how the law functions, but I would have hoped that they would find a way to, I don't know, check what's on his computer, see if he's involved in any way with child pornography. And in fact, he was because I made a video about this as well. There was a website called Rapey, where people uploaded that type of content and he was very much on that website. So this headline is not shocking when you take all of this into account, but the shocking thing is all of this was out there. Like he was public about this. This is not like a bombshell drop. Like people knew that he had these points of view. Anyway, let's get to what actually happened. A Virginia man who unsuccessfully ran for Congress in 2018 and admitted to being a pedophile and white supremacist was arrested for kidnapping a 12 year old girl. Nathan Daniel Larson, 40, was arrested last week in Denver during a flight layover from Fresno, California. Larson was on his way to Virginia with a 12 year old girl he met through social media, authorities said. The girl was uninjured and has been reunited with her family. This particular case is extremely disturbing, Fresno County Sheriff Margaret Mims said during a news conference Saturday very far reaching across our nation. Fresno authorities received a report that a 12 year old girl went missing on December 14th. Authorities quickly learned that the girl may have been forced to run away with an older man to catch a cross country flight from Fresno Yosemite International Airport to Virginia. Now I'm happy that nothing happened to the girl, thank God. But I also think the 
authorities generally, I don't know which branch I would really blame, dropped the fucking ball. Because someone like this, someone who has been in prison, someone who threatened to kill a president and is constantly advocating for changes to be made that will inevitably harm children, like early marriage, like child pornography, like child labor laws. Like someone who's so obsessed with children should surely be monitored, especially because he was on that website called Rapey. So I do think that he should have been watched in more ways than one. And this should have been prevented, honestly, because like I said, he was open about it. It was not a secret. So I'm happy nothing happened to the girl, but I'm also angered that that happened in the first place when we've all been knowing that he's off the rails, essentially. And investigators learned Larson allegedly convinced the girl to sneak out of her house at around 2 a.m. and forced her to wear a long wig at the airport. He also told her to act as though she was disabled and unable to speak to ensure she would not converse with anyone at the airport while making their way onto the airplane, authorities said in a news release. Detectives searched Larson's home in Virginia and found electronic devices that revealed that he runs a website that encourages pedophilia and child rape, authorities said. That was the website I was talking about. So had they actually just searched his house prior, granted, I don't know what they'd have to do to get that type of warrant, but if you see the name Nathan Larson on a website that's encouraging that, I would think it would be enough to suspect that he has child pornography on his computer and, you know, go in that direction. Like I said, I don't know the law, but I just feel like something could have and should have been done. During the past two months, Larson was able to convince the Fresno girl through manipulation and grooming to send him pornographic images of herself, authorities said. And then in the next section, they pretty much go over his history, which I already told you. So thankfully, she's okay, doesn't seem like anything happened, but inevitably I think what most people finding out about this will be thinking about is like, what was he planning to do? Like obviously he kidnapped her, yes, but then what was, what was the long-term goal? Did he want to turn her into a child bride? You know, like there are all these like terrifying questions that are like, what, where was this going? You know, and obviously she was very likely to be in danger of being sexually abused considering his views. But aside from that, it's just a very grim kind of path you go down when you think about, okay, if he hadn't been caught, then what? I'm glad he's been caught. I'm glad that they've searched his computer and everything. But again, I feel like this was one of the most obvious open and shut cases of someone being a pedophile, but on top of that, just being so openly okay with child content like that. Anyways, guys, you can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you think there would have been a way to kind of surveil him or arrest him or get a warrant on him prior to him actually committing this because I really just feel like the authorities dropped the ball with him. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. Let's get right into the fan art.